Greetings. The following is part of a series of lectures on cosmology. In this particular lecture, we will derive the Freeman Lemaitre Robertson Walker metric and explore different kinds of spatial geometries. The outline of this lecture is as follows. First, we will introduce some units and conventions to make life easier for ourselves. Then, we will mathematically formalize the notion of homogeneity in isotropy. Afterwards, we will derive the Freeman Lemaitre Robertson Walker metric. And finally, we will use this metric to explore some of the possible geometries of space, of space time. Throughout the entirety of this lecture series, we will adopt the Planck unit convention. That is, we set Newton's constant, Planck's constant, Boltzmann's constant, and the speed of light to one. Moreover, the metric signature that we will use is the minus plus 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 signature. These conventions are common in general relativity books like Hawking Analysis, Large Scale Structure of Space Time, and Meiser Dolan Wheeler's Gravitation. In addition to this, the Einstein field equations will be written as follows, where r mu nu is the Ricci tensor, r is the Ricci scalar, t mu nu is the energy momentum tensor, and lambda is the cosmological constant. We will also adopt the convention that lambda less than zero is for anti decitter space, and lambda greater than zero is for decitter space. Now, let us state the cosmological principle. The cosmological principle implies that the universe is both homogeneous and isotropic. Therefore, no observable irregularities in the large-scale structuring throughout the evolution of the matter field that, the, that was initially laid down by the Big Bang should be produced. However, how valid is this assumption? After all, this started out as, as a philosophical assumption. Uh, surprisingly, the, the data gathered by astrophysicists seem to support the claim of an isotropic universe. First, the, cosmo, the cosmic microwave background is isotropic to a few parts in 10 to the 5, apart from the dipole due to our motion. Moreover, cosmically, cosmologically distant objects such as quasars and gamma rays appear isotropic to a few parts in 100. On the other hand, testing for homogeneity is more complicated, as how can we be sure that we do not live at, to, at the center of a spherically symmetric universe? Turns out there are tests for homogeneity, which involve Thomson scattering of cosmic microwave background of distant electrons. In an inhomogeneous universe, one would expect a distant electron would see a, a different cosmic microwave background temperature in different directions. Then, after scattering, the cosmic microwave background sky one sees would contain a different mixture of temperature black bodies uh, superposed by scattering. In other words, one would find uh, I sub B or the intensity to be related to the frequency in the following manner, where nu is the frequency and T is the temperature. Since Kobe and Firas experiments observe a black body to one part in 10 to the four, gross deviations from cosmic homogeneities are not acceptable. Now, let us formalize the notion of homogeneity and isotropy in general relativity. First, suppose that the space-time m can be sliced into space-like surfaces sigma sub t of constant cosmic time t. Then the surfaces are homogeneous and isotropic. If any two given o and p in sigma sub t at the same t and any given space-like unit vector a and b tangent to sigma sub t, there is an isometry that takes o and A to P and B and fixes the sigma sub T. Now, let us consider the condition of homogeneity and isotropy on the metric structure. Uh, first, let us define a forward pointing unit vector to the surface sigma sub T. Uh, this unit ve vector has the property when dotted with itself produces one. Now, we must define a set of co-moving observers whose velocities are n hat and has trajectories which are integral curves of n hat. Moreover, let us define uh, x not to be t as the time coordinate and x1, x2, and x3 to be x, y, z be the Cartesian coordinates, labeling which co-moving observers passes through a particular event. Now, we begin placing constraints on the form of the metric. Uh, recall that a vector a is tangent to sigma sub t if and only if its contravariant t component vanishes, such that a sub naught equals zero. Moreover, since the co-moving observer's three spatial components are fixed, their four velocities have n, uh, n superscript i uh, equal to zero, and n, supers uh, n superscript zero is, not the, is the only non-zero component. However, n hat is then normal to the surface sigma sub t, and we have n superscript i times a sub i equal to zero if 
a is tangent to sigma sub t. And from this, the vector tangent to sigma sub t uh, have a naught is equal to zero. And hence, we have g naught i times a i is equal to zero for any a i. Next, we consider two points O and P on the same space like slice sigma sub t. As a result, there is no, uh, there, no, sorry. As a result, there is an isometry mapping between O and P that preserves the slice. So it follows that uh, nabla t dot nabla t is the same at both O and P. However, in the above coordinate system we have, uh, the covariant derivative of t is equal to a one zero zero zero. So uh, so nabla t dot nabla t is equal to the inverse component of g naught naught. Since this is the same at O and P, it is trivial to see that g naught naught is the only dependent on, is only dependent on time. Moreover, since n nu is equal to n naught comma zero comma zero comma zero is timelike, then g naught naught is less than zero. We may then relabel the space-like surfaces with a new uh, time coordinate such that t bar is equal to the integral of square root of g naught naught times dt. And this new time coordinate is defined up to a new additive constant. With the formalism of homogeneity and isotropy set up, we are now ready to derive the Freeman Lemaitre Robertson Walker metric. With this new choice of coordinate, the metric can be written in the following manner. In subsequent slides, we are interested in how GIJ depends on T, X1, X2, and X3. We do this by taking any space like unit vector and, and defining a local velocity gradient. No that the local velocity gradient can only depend on t and not on xi or, or ai. Noting this, we have a not equals a, a superscript not equals zero, and n nu equals one comma zero comma zero comma zero. We see that the local uh, velocity gradient is written, can be written in terms of the gamma factor. No, uh, not the gamma factor, the uh, Christoffel symbol. Uh, if we use the expansion of the Christoffel symbol and the form of the metric g not uh, g not i, we find that g uh, this Christoffel symbol is as follows. Therefore, the local velocity gradient can be written in terms of the time derivative of the metric. Now, since this is independent of direction, uh, independent of the direction of a, it follows that. Uh, the time derivative of the metric is some multiple constant of the metric, then it can be mathematically written in the following manner. And thus we define a scale factor uh, A of T in the following manner. This can be defined up to some multipli multiplicative constant. And as a result, the metric can take the following form, where gamma IJ is the spatial metric of some three-dimensional manifold. And this three-dimensional manifold must be homogeneous and isotropic. This metric is known as the friedman lemaitre robertson walker metric, and h of t is known as the Hubble rate, and in subsequent slides, we will show that this is indeed a solution to the Einstein field equations. Now, let us talk about some of the possible spatial geometries under the condition of homogeneity and isotropy. To determine the possible spatial geometries, we first have to write gamma ij. Gamma ij needs to be isotropic around any choice of origin O. So the metric can be written in spherical coordinates in the following manner. Now, we must find functions f, f of chi, that lead to a homogeneous isotropic three manifold. And to do so, we let us compute the Ricci tensor. And there are many ways to do this, but my preferred way is to use differential forms as it is relatively faster than calculating the Christoffel symbols. We will calculate the r chi chi component as an example, and the rest will be listed in subsequent slides as the same methodology can be applied. To compute the Ricci tensor using differential forms, we first have to write the orthonormal basis. The easiest orthonormal basis one can write is as follows, where the hats denote the coordinates in the orthonormal basis. And uh, now let us take the exterior derivatives of these orthonormal bases, and we yield the following, where the primes denote the derivatives with respect to chi. From this, we can now introduce the Cartan's first equation of structure to calculate the spin connections. And the equality above is zero because there is no torsion in general relativity. And by inspection, the relevant spin connections are as follows. Now, 
To calculate the Ricci tensor in orthonormal bases, we use the Cartan's second equation of structure, which is the following. And uh, therefore, the relevant Ricci tensor in orthonormal bases are as follows. Moreover, since the Riemann tensor is related to the Ricci tensor in orthonormal bases in the following manner, and the Riemann tensor is related to the Riemann tensor in component form in the following manner, where E alpha uh, alpha sub no, E alpha sub alpha hat is the connection to form. Therefore, the Ricci tensor uh, R chi chi, the Ricci tensor component R chi chi can be written as follows. The other Ricci tensors are listed as follows. And for th the three manifold to be spatially homogeneous and isotropic, it is necessary, though not sufficient, uh, for the manifold to be an Einstein manifold. Uh, that is that Rij is equal to Kgij, where K is some constant. Therefore, one requires this. And as we can see, this is a second order differential equation and, is, and it is relatively easy to solve. The, from the equation in the previous slide, the, different, the differential equation has the following ansatz, where C1 and C2 are some arbitrary constants of integration. However, since regularity requires O, uh, re regularity at O requires that F0 and F0 and F prime zero equals zero, thus the solution simplifies to the following. And therefore the spatial metric for a homogeneous and isotropic universe is as follows. From this, the metric in equation 4.19, it is easy to check homogeneity and isotropy. Uh, equation 4.19 is the metric for a three sphere of radius square root two over K. In limit K goes to zero, Equation 4.19 becomes flat and uh, becomes flat three-dimensionally Euclidean metric in spherical coordinates. Therefore, the spatial metric k greater than zero. If the spatial metric has k greater than zero, we can then say that the met the space-time is closed. And if k is equal to zero, we can say the space-time is spatially flat. There is another interesting property when k is less than zero. In this case, the spatial geometry is open and one can take the analytic continuation of the sine function to obtain the following. Uh, now let us summarize some of the spatial geometries. The first of which is R3 or the spatially flat space time. Uh, this is standard Euclidean space with an infinite volume and the rules of geometry and, the, and has the basic Euclidean rules of geometry. Uh, in fact, our universe appears to be spatially flat to a very good approximation. The second, uh, the second geometry is the closed space time. This space time has the geometry of a three sphere and the usual coordinate system correspond to hyperspherical coordinates. The maximum distance from the origin is the antipodal point at chi equals pi times this factor, where there is a coordinate singularity. The volume of the sphere is finite and is written as follows. And the closed space exhibits a non-Euclidean features. For example, the interior angles of a triangle is, is uh, greater than pi. And their uh, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. In the third kind of universe is H3, or known as the open universe. This is known as the hyperbolic universe with the same uh, with the same topology as Euclidean space. However, it exhibits a non-Euclidean non, non features. For example, the interior regions of, an, of a triangle add to less than uh, pi, and the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. Not only is this is the volume of an infinite uh, not only is the volume of an open space infinite, but it's exponentially infinite in the sense that the volume of a sphere of radius R is the following, which increases exponentially with the radius. The final of which, which we did not, did not mention in the previous slide is a projective space. This is an alternative topology of the closed universe in which the antipodal points are defined in the following manner. Locally, it looks like a closed universe, but has half the volume. The unique region of the projective space has chi less than pi over square root of 2k. For example, in, in the region between the North Pole and the equator, if one passes 
the equator, one reappears on the opposite side of the sphere. Uh, this is the only non-trivial topology of any of these spaces we have considered that is globally homogeneous and isotropic. Uh, for a visual depiction, I have placed I have pasted a picture of the three types of uh, of geometries here. The first one here is the one of the closed universe. The second one here is of the open universe, and the third one here is of the flat universe. I hope you have learned something from this lecture and see you in the next one. Thank you.